And everybody is Tim Razor with Revere Asset Management just after three o'clock here on a Wednesday night. So very quickly, stock nerds, market lovers. Before, before, before you and I begin, listen. If you go to Revere Asset, click on the podcast tab. This boy is this one chart we should all be looking at. <laughs> it is holding true, and I'm going to go over that here momentarily. But if you haven't seen this week's podcast, please give it a watch, uh, give it a listen in your car ride or in your commute. You can get it anywhere you get your uh, podcast. Uh, go to our website, download it, or just watch it uh, on our YouTube book, however you want to consume it. If you can't find it for some reason, in a way that is a good format for you, just email me here, uh, timurgrasset.com or any one of the fellas, and we will, uh, or Meryl, and we'll get it. We'll make sure we get it to you, because it, it, I'm telling you, these the, the chart that I think we should all be looking at, absolutely this week is absolutely holding uh, serve. So real quickly, uh, you know, we'll get into it here. Uh, any questions, concerns, comments, take comments, anything I'm saying? Just right here, Tim Regrass said, if you want to talk to the fellas that make all the portfolio decisions, the buys, the sells, what goes on the watch list, why things go on the watch list. Listen, uh, Hunter, Alex, and Don, what makes us so different than any other shop in the free world is that we are available to you, whether you're a client or not. We always talk to uh, stock nerds and market lovers. We're here to empower individual investors, whether it's us doing the work for you or uh, our techniques and tactics uh, combined with your know-how uh, you, you're doing it for yourself. So listen, anytime that you need help or you just want to talk to say to America's fiduciary, ask them a life planning question. We don't sell any services. Like we don't sell insurance. We don't sell, <laughs> sure. <laughs> I was going to say we sure as hell. Annuities are insurance. We don't sell any products is what I'm trying to say here. So you want an unbiased look at why annuities cost you an arm and a leg year after year. You don't even know it. You have an annuity for 20 years. You've been paying a trailing fee to somebody for that uh, forever. It, it's crazy. It's not just an annuity for you. It's an annuity to the salesperson that sold it to you. But you can get out of these things, uh, especially if the way they were sold to you. And, and Or if someone never told you that life insurance is an investment, ooh, that's a big red flag. So you can call us, 855-732-5932, and we'll be more than happy to explain all that to you as fiduciaries. Uh, let's see here. Uh, real quick, uh, if you like to get a hold of me, uh, Twitter wise, I get a bunch of people that email me or email me, they direct message me, they show up right here on Twitter at TJ Razor is my handle. And then remember, stock nerds and market lovers, these videos are for what they are for your edification purposes only. They're never ever doing risk advice, 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 seek advice. All you have to do is, in fact, give us a call. So let's let's dive into the indices real quick, and then I'll talk about that one chart I think we should all be looking at here. So SP is like, I, Look, you're just right here at the 618 from a recent high to a recent low. You're kind of right here at the 618. Um, where do I think we go? I, I, I think that we're heading to a three-day weekend. I'd, I'd just be surprised if we if we sold off here all together. It doesn't mean we just can't trade or tread water, but um, the, the picture just isn't really clear. And I'm going to explain. I'm going to show you why. The picture is not clear and how it will become clear if you see this one thing happen on this one chart i believe you should all be looking at so that that's the s p's that's not a bearish chart per se uh it's not you know this chart is not good this is and i say it's the nasdaq uh rejected at the 21 it doesn't mean we can't scoot higher than the 21 tomorrow or or uh or friday going into that three-day weekend uh, just to confuse everybody, you know, a, a move up to the 50-day simple here wouldn't surprise me one bit. You know, getting up over 16,000, you're at 15,916 right now. Uh, nothing would surprise me here, meaning um, what if the Nasdaq were to go lower. I mean, the, the Dow looks great, right? The Dow's just 30 stocks. Uh, and the RTYs, they, the small caps look awful. This is definitely bearish. So it, it's like you got halfway good on the S&Ps. That looks great. Um, NASDAQ rejected 21 today, and you're having trouble with uh, the small cap. So it's not this great picture, but that's not, but the market isn't totally falling apart. And it, and it really has to do with a couple of things here. So bond prices. So bond prices today, you're going to laugh at me. I'm like, well, bond prices went up today. So bond prices recovered just a little bit. Okay. And you can see that they're not selling off anymore, which, it's kind of easier, and by the way, I could totally see these things getting rejected and going lower, and if that happens, markets are probably going lower. And why is it so? It's easier to look at it, I believe, through the eyes of the 10-year treasury. And so the treasury, uh, the interest rates, so you're, the 10-year notes are reading 1.72, and they had this massive move to start the year, 
and now they kind of sold out a couple of days and they're down here at the eight. This chart doesn't tell you the story. It's the ATR chart because what happens is you get up to these ATR chart levels, these three ATR levels, when you start to pull back, you know, which is, it doesn't matter what the chart is, you get these three ATR levels and it's this probabilistic nature of markets, right? And so when you can, you can trade up a little bit to the third ATR, but most likely you get a pullback or a pause, third ATR, pullback, pause, third ATR, pullback, pause. You only get up to plus two ATR, you pull back. Here, you make a little bit of a run, but now you're starting to ease back. And I need you to see something. So this is um, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. So just real quick, for we get a bunch of new uh, viewers of the videos every night. So the TNX is the 10-year treasuries. It's the rates, okay? So the rate currently, right now, is one uh, 1.725, that's how you read the chart, and it's lower than it was Monday, okay? So let me show you what happened to S&Ps on what Monday, get rid of all this. So here is Monday, right? They went lower, they started to recover. Here's Tuesday and Wednesday. So S&Ps start to recover Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, and Qs start to recover uh, Monday afternoon, Tuesday, Wednesday, the same chart, right? And so now let's go back to this TNX chart and you can see what starts to happen. Yeah, you peak Monday morning and rates and rates start to come down. So right now the relationship is what? Rates stable to lower, markets stable to higher, okay? And so if rates continue to come down, say back, if they traverse back to the mean, or the 21 exponential moving average, like most things tend to want to do, we, whether the average comes up to meet price or price comes down to meet the mean, the markets are probably not just going to fall apart. But if you see rates reassert themselves, you most likely see an ebb lower in uh, the NASDAQ and an ebb lower in the S&Ps. And by the way, the markets didn't fall apart like S&Ps, again, were up what? Uh, four tenths of a percent. You're like Tim, four tenths of a percent. You're talking bullish. Uh, I'm just saying they're not falling apart, and that's where you got to start, right? With uh, the way the year started here for bulls. But look at the dollar. The dollar here today had itself a move lower. That's that's bullish right now. And so if you if you see this dollar start to pick up, well then it's probably going to be a little uh, challenging for markets as well. Dollar uh, just consolidating here. And now what happened the last three days with rates? So rates peak, and what did the dollar do the last three days? The dollar followed suit. Now a little bit more, quote unquote, dramatic on the chart than uh, the TNX has done, but you have the dollar moving lower and rates moving over the last three days. And to recap, you have what? The S&Ps not taking out lows, but holding serve and trying to recover. You have the NASDAQ doing as much so where does that leave us all it's a it's a mixed picture this is probably not the market you're going to go out and bet the farm on right like you want to see synchronicity you want to see um the s p's and and the nasdaq especially the nasdaq uh have really nice robust bullish charts not extended but both above the 21 maybe the five coming through the eight uh per se you you want to see a bullish picture not this muddled picture getting rejected before you get to the 21 uh, and the 618. So hopefully that makes sense. But there are some things, by the way, the, the, you know, you can look at the the, 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 T, the NASDAQ here where it hit three ATR and then pulled back. TNX hit three ATR starting to pull back. I don't know if it goes deep, any, any, I don't know if the pullback goes any deeper in the TNX, but it's also why you don't chase. Like, let's look at what crude oil is doing. Crude oil is approaching what the three ATR. Does it mean that crude can't go on one of these great runs? But eventually it gives up the ghost. Did you need to understand, you know, when to when to initiate the trade and when to sell the trade? The probabilities of crude doing this, I don't know what it is, but I know that the probabilities once you hit two ATR and three ATR, the probabilities increase every day that you'll get some kind of pullback or a pause or a pause, and price comes up to meet it, and then other stocks are making their moves. So do you want to buy uh, a DVN, right? Um, 
extended. This this stock is extended. And you're like Tim, I'm not. I don't like. I don't know these ATR charts. What what does extended look like on a chart with a with a with my moving averages are a five, an eight, a 21 exponential, a 34 exponential, a 50 day simple. Uh, that's extended. Well, Tim, extended by who? Extended by what? Well, let me show you. So um, what you want to see here is um, you want to just take your drawing tool and you can see right now we're almost 10 percent off the 21 the nine and a half percent that's extended you're not giving yourself a fighting chance you want to buy these these types of ideas when you know when they're when they're close to the mean right they're coming through the mean and you start to get a moving average stack and you can see even here you were off the 21 a little bit comes back to the eight eight's aggressive to buy but you get five, eight, 21. Uh, let's see, you don't get really moving average stack here, right? One, three, you're a little extended. I don't know if it really gave you that big of an opportunity there. Uh, how about um, Fang? I'm just trying to remember the some of the leading oils here. Fang, Fang Diamondback Energy, not uh, Fang as you would know it, the tech names. This is what? Eight, 9% off the mean. That's extended, but look at what happens here. You get a you get a 5.8 cross, you start to get moving average alignment, at least 5.8, 21, uh, 34, but you're still pretty far off. And and so if you're, I'm a big fan of moving average alignment. And so I'm not sure these things really gave you a lot of a lot of heads up that, hey, this is a great trade to be looking at. Well, what are the things that I do want to study here that I do think give you an opportunity? Well, let's look at something like uh, LPX, so Louisiana Pacific. Okay, so here we have a stock that has uh, the eight of the five trying to come through the eight and 21 at the same time. Okay, great. I've got a uh, potential moving average alignment coming and I'm not extended off the mean. The mean to me is your lowest risk entry point because if you start closing below the mean or the 21, you know you're probably wrong in the trade, okay? And so well, what does this look like on a weekly chart? Because Tim, you said you want to trade weeklies. Oh, I like this, just consolidating. So. Look at this, this stock, what is what does this stock do? It, this is uh, back in summertime, in the fall, consolidates, right, all across, so it had some earnings, moves up, consolidates, had a period after earnings there, down here, consolidate, and now you're at another consolidated phase before what earnings. And so can it take out, we'll just call this 80 right here, can it take out 80 from 76? That's the weekly consolidation, okay? And so, but the stock is what? It's doing the classic here. It goes up, it uh, forms this little cup shape, and now you're kind of just consolidating. So let's go back to the daily. You're not extended. And so, Tim, show me that on an ATR chart. You betcha. So here is one ATR, two ATR, three ATR, one, two, and three of what? These periods down here. See, the ATR chart is a graphical way to see if you're buying something that's overbought. Right, most people say that stock is overbought, but they have no idea what the hell they're talking about. The the chart gives you a, a fact-based look at what is overbought, what is quote unquote oversold. Although I don't think oversold man is just a state of mind when the markets are not acting normal. But that's a, that's another video for another day. And so here you're you're within what you're you're, you're right here is the 21, and here you are. You're not extended. You're not even at the first ATR. And so. That's the kind of the setup you're looking for, I think, here in 2021. I don't think it's a, I don't think 2022 is going to be, excuse me, 2022. I do not think, uh, I don't think the 2022 market is going to be forgiven for people who buy extended. Yeah, I, I, this this market appears to be quick. It was getting quick at the end of 2021, and if you buy extended, um, it might not be that forgiving. How about BLDR? BLDR. So here, okay, BLDR. Uh, got a little bit close to 21, uh, pulls back a little bit closer to the mean. Let's look at that on this chart here. So here we go, eight. So we don't have five, eight cross yet. We have eight, five. So not quite moving average alignment, but I don't want to look at things that are extended. I want to look at things that are setting up. Is Builder setting up? Is LPX setting up? How about um, BCC? How about BCC? Uh, yeah, look at this here, Boise Cascade. So five, eight cross right here. 21. Okay, now I don't quite have that 34, 50 moving average alignment. Some people that might not be a big deal, but oh, I do have it at plus one ATR. That might be on the little bit extended side for me. I think I'm splitting hairs there. How about um, European wax centers? 
uh, EWCZ, I believe. There we go. Uh, okay, so it doesn't look like much here on a um, daily ATR chart, but I got a white bar here. It's just something I want to watch. It's an IPO from last year. So um, 1855, a lot of the IPOs have gotten blasted. Uh, European Wax Center is holding above its issue price. Something I think that's interesting about that, let's put it on a weekly. And yeah, you can see the pattern that I like here. Just nice consolidation moves up. Uh, really not giving up too much of the ghost here. Can this be something to watch as an IPO? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, let's do two more. How about, oh, NTR. Let's look at NTR. So Nutrien is super interesting to me here. NTR. NTR is the, the rare, the rare Nutrien's white bar. Now, not moving average stack on a daily, but you get white bar, white bar. White bar daily, white bar weekly, right? So you get five, eight, 21, 34. You're moving average alignment. Okay, so that's a nice looking chart there, Ed. Yes, sir, Joe Bomber. And so not extended. Uh, there's the 21, but you don't have moving average alignment on daily, but I like that weekly chart a ton. Nutrien on the daily to give you uh, where you are in time and space because I think situational awareness is critical to where you are in markets and understanding it is most critical for you and me. So just off the 21 a little bit, let's look at this thing now on a weekly ATR chart. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. look at this. So just take it back to last summer. Mm -hmm. Really not giving up a good, a good looking chart of NTR. And then uh, let's do one that you will be in ETF. So XLY. Interesting about XLY is that's a daily coming right up to 21. XLY is uh, Lowe's, Home Depot, Amazon. Let's look at XLY in the weekly. It's not a bad looking chart. Look, there's the mean. It's holding serve at the mean. It's not a bad looking chart. Discretionary is not quite giving up the ghost off the highs, but uh, how about we look at XLY? Now that's the daily. Okay, you can see stymied here, a little moving average confusion. Oh, let's look at the weekly. Is that a white bar? Oh, I know white bars. White bars are super bullish signals. And so when I see them, I like to pay attention to the last white bar uh, right down here on XLY. After what? After this really nice, you had a move up coming there. Nice consolidation. You get the white bar. And then before you know it, Bob's your uncle. You're making a one, two, three, four week move. And now you're just in what? You're in this consolidated flat base right here. And these are just oscillations and the continuation patterns. And if the market stays intact, right? If the market stays intact, uh, these typically resolve in the direction of where they came from. And so what do you mean the market stays intact? That brings me to where I want to close with you. The NASDAQ on a weekly really hasn't broken yet. You know, daily, it looks like a hot mess. But there's that white bar. Kind of the same thing, right, with uh, XLY where it happened. Now, let's just see what it develops with the NASDAQ. So I don't think you want to get um, over, oh, bonus stock. We'll do bonus stock. I want to do Tesla. But I don't think we'll get overly pessimistic here. And I don't think you get overly optimistic. I think you approach the market with uh, very open eyes and a clear mindset of what you want to do and a decision to not try and buy extended Tesla. Wow. Is that a really nice looking weekly chart? <laughs> yes, it is. And so uh, we'll go to daily here. Oh, daily white bar. Tesla, definitely. I love Tesla. I, look, I like Tesla. I like trading stock. Um, I don't know if it, it get, you know, earnings are coming up when 126. Does it blast through here before earnings? I don't know. Anything's a guess on my part there. But by the cross, and when you get these white bars, even with the moving average confusion, they do give you a little bit of movement. So something to look at. There. So hopefully, stock nerds, market lovers, you know how much I love you. You know the fact that you tune in uh, week after week, night after night, uh, and you listen to the sound of my voice talk about markets and stocks, and you listen to all the other fellas means the world to me. Absolutely, positively does. So thank you. Hope you have a great night. Uh, we'll have the podcast uh, done early. We're doing a podcast tomorrow. We'll get that thing up and posted uh, uh, as soon as we're done tomorrow, so you can uh, dive into it over the long upcoming three-day weekends. Hopefully that helps, and I will see you at the next update.